Chicken Scarparello or Chicken Scarp. So good. There's so many ways to make this. You probably have seen it in your favorite Italian family style restaurant. You know, there's a little bit of time involved because you're doing the roasting of the potatoes, you're doing your chicken, you're letting it braise in the oven, but it's so worth it. And you know, double, triple, quadruple the recipe and then have it during the week for leftovers. Always one that like you can just grab, you know, you can have it for lunch. Just wanna show you all these ingredients so you know exactly what you're getting into uh, before we get started. So we have chicken thighs and Italian sausage. This is sweet variety. Potatoes, you can use any type of potatoes you want. Just cut them up to an equal thickness. We have parsley red bell peppers that gives a really nice color to it and garlic lots of garlic in this one white wine i also have chicken stock and red wine vinegar in addition we have these cherry peppers which is a very integral part of chicken scarpa scarpa riello so i'm going to take these these are little potatoes i'm just going to slice them in half they work particularly well in this dish it's you know you're just making one cut but if you have big potatoes, you know, Yukon Gold or, or really whatever type, just cut them into about one inch by one inch cubes. That, that should be fine. You could even make bigger pieces if you want. Put a lot of olive oil on them and I'm just spreading them out. I have parchment paper on, on uh, my baking sheet. So this is gonna allow them to roast more easily and to not stick. So I'm gonna season these potatoes really well with kosher salt. Wanna get a lot of flavor on these potatoes already. A lot of black pepper here. How much? Maybe half a teaspoon, three quarter teaspoon. And I'm putting even more olive oil on. I want them to really roast, get perfectly brown and roasted. And the little trick is turn them on their flat side and just leave them that way the whole time. One side will be really roasted. Instead of having, if you flip them, you might have both sides not being that, that, that browned. So they're gonna go in the oven for 30 minutes. And let's move on to the chicken. So I'm drying it off really, really well. I wanna get all that moisture off the chicken so we can get a good sear. And I just take a couple paper towels and I and just pat it, pat them really dry. Any loose chicken, you know, chicken skin, you can cut off, discard, you know, and kind of clean them up a little bit. My hands are clean again now. I washed them and we're gonna salt and pepper the chicken on both sides. You can also add salt, and you should add salt to chicken after you fry it too in the oil, because then it can absorb more salt. But I'm gonna salt and pepper it now, so I might be double seasoning it. And chicken doesn't have a lot of flavor, so you definitely wanna use a lot of salt and pepper. So here's the bell peppers. And just slice it and remove the core. You can bang out the seeds. You can take the little white part of the pepper out if you want, you can cut it out. You don't, you don't have to get crazy here. And you're just gonna cut the pepper into strips. For the garlic, I'm going to use a head of garlic. If you don't like a lot of garlic, don't use it. If you don't like any garlic, don't use any of it, you know? I'm just gonna give it a little tap so I can take the skin off relatively easily. You could also use the back of your knife, which, you know, you see me doing most of my videos. Figured this time I'll just hit it on the table, on the cutting board to show you how to do that. I'm gonna cut the garlic, any really big pieces. I'm gonna get them all about uniform thickness and size. And we're gonna move on to the cherry peppers. Love cherry peppers. Love, love cherry peppers. Can't stress that enough. And this, they, you'll really never find this dish without cherry peppers in it. Um, out of the hundred Italian restaurants I've been to, I've never seen it before without cherry peppers. So they come in sliced and they also come crushed and they call it a hoagie spread. Cherry peppers are extremely popular in this part of the country. They find their way into many dishes in, in your local Italian restaurant. So I'm gonna take off the stem. I'm gonna just cut the pepper into quarters, essentially. And you can remove the seeds if you want. These peppers aren't particularly hot. They're about 4,000 on the Scoville unit, which is about equivalent to a jalapeno pepper. Just, just so you kinda have a reference point, though they don't taste anything like a jalapeno pepper. I'm gonna cut them into these pieces, get them all into a bowl, and just put them off to the side and work on the parsley. Now this parsley has huge stems, so I definitely wanna remove them. I recommend you do the same for your guests. 
And when you get all the stems, the big ones taken care of, just give it a mince and put that off to the side. So the potato has been 30 minutes. They're roasted now and they can just kind of sit off to the side. And by doing that trick, they'll be really brown, just like this. Look how brown that is. Perfect, perfect potato. So I have medium heat, big cast iron pan. You don't have to use a cast iron pan here, but it works really well for this dish. And I'm just gonna take the sausage links and put them in and brown them up. How long are they gonna cook for? This, it doesn't really matter. You just wanna get some nice color on the, on the sausage. They're, the sausage is going to finish in the oven. And I'm just showing the red wine vinegar because I forgot to show it to you before in the beginning and I forgot to show you the chicken stock. So you sear the sausage links until well browned, then just put them off to the side. They're still raw in the middle, which is fine. I want you to slice these. Um, you know, I've got the picture of that part. Slice them in on a bias and we're going to use those sausage pieces in a little while. So the same pan, nice and hot. If you need a tiny bit more oil, you can add it, but you should have enough from the pork fat from the sausage. And skin side down, chicken thighs in. If the thighs had a little wetness on them prior to that, pat them dry one more time. And I'm, I'm moving my hand around, so the pan itself, you can rotate. So you have a hot, you might have a hot and cool spot. Or you, maybe your island's not level, like mine's not level. You know, you know what I mean? So it'll like, won't, one side won't be as hot. And so I want them to get really crisp, just like this and kind of locking in the flavor. Chicken thighs have a lot more flavor than any other part of the chicken, so that's why I tend to use them in dishes like this. But you can use just regular white meat, you know, chicken breast, boneless. Restaurants will often, they'll serve it either way. La Parma, which is probably, has the best chicken scarp, you know, version, they do it, they offer it in both ways. So I put the garlic in, I let it get lightly golden, and then I put those cherry peppers in and it's just sizzling. It's just great, great. You know, you could just, you can just look at this picture right now and you could just smell those cherry peppers. You know, they like the vinegar will go right up your nose. So when you're cooking, just make sure you got your head back a little bit. And now we're going to hit it up with the white wine, half a cup of white wine. Now this is all for the amount of chicken and sausage that I put in the ingredients. If you're using more, you're going to need more. If you're using less, you'll need less sauce. And we're going to let this wine cook out for about three minutes. And I'm pointing to the back of that wooden spoon. You can kind of like scratch off the bottom, any of that good chicken flavor. You know, the wine's going to help deglaze it. And there's our red wine vinegar. Half a cup of that is going to go in here. You can let this cook out for a couple more minutes. Basically, this sauce is going to reduce somewhat. The more you reduce it, the less sauce you're going to have. So if you want more sauce and you want it to be really sticky and thick, you're going to have to start with more liquid. So I'm adding one and a half cups of chicken stock in now. So I have a total of two and a half cups of liquid. That's going to reduce probably to about a cup or a cup and a half of liquid. I'm going to let this cook out for a few more minutes. And this is forming our sauce. The sticky vinegar sauce. That's chicken scarparillo. Sometimes you'll see this dish in other parts of the country. It'll just be called chicken and vinegar. So just maybe in your, like where you live, that might be the dish that this is similar to. And I'm just holding the spoon up, just showing you like the sauce. Like I'm testing it right now. Let's see if it coats the spoon. It's not quite there yet. So I'm gonna let it cook a little bit more. And here's all the pepper strips. And I'm just gonna put them in now. We're gonna be cooking this in the oven for a long time. So that's why I didn't wanna like pan sear these or anything because then the peppers would essentially almost disintegrate. So I'm just putting them in right at the end now. And see the sausage? See how it's completely raw on the, out, on the inside, but it's, but it's brown on the outside? I did that because if I cook the sausage all the way through, and we're cooking it in the oven now for another 60 minutes, then the sausage would get, get a little dry. And why are we cooking it for 60 minutes in the oven? Because we're going to braise the chicken thighs. Chicken thighs are just cooked on the outside. They're raw on the inside. By braising a chicken thigh in vinegar, it's one of the best ways you can make it. And this whole dish, like the flavors will all come together. And it's kind of, you might think it's a little bit long, but by doing this, it's kind of foolproof. You're gonna have a perfect chicken scarp dish. And I'm just kind of like arranging the chicken skin side up. I don't want the skin to be, I don't want the liquid to hit the skin. So I'm putting it in the oven, 350. 60 minutes and here's those potatoes you can keep them covered or off to the side 
It's been 60 minutes now. The chicken's out. It's braised. The chicken is pretty much completely cooked through. It's nice and tender. The sausage is cooked through too. And the potatoes, I'm just gonna put back in. We're just gonna put this back in the oven for 10 or 15 minutes just to warm it up to get the potatoes a little bit more crispy. Just putting them right on top too. Yep, and there it is. There it is. So it's like everything now is, the flavors are comp completely have melded. They're so good. You just hit this up with the parsley. I hope you enjoy this chicken dish. Check out my franchise and my marsala. Also the piccata. And finally, chicken sorrentino. It's all part of the chicken playlist that I have. Hope you enjoy this, guys. Hope to see you next time.